Hi, I am Ata. I hope you are well. In this video series, I'll be talking about ASP.NET MVC. Let's start. ASP.NET MVC is Microsoft's new web framework for developing web applications. ASP.NET forms, I mean ASPX websites, are still there. They are not being replaced by MVC. Even the giant SharePoint is based on ASP.NET forms. ASP.NET MVC is just a new alternative. It's more object oriented. You can use your OOP and pattern skills better on MVC. It's also more modular and more testable. Before getting to know MVC, I want you to understand when you should use ASP.NET MVC and when ASP.NET Forms. While well, ASP.NET Forms has web controls, like grid view, and ASP.NET MVC doesn't. This slows down constructing the pages since you have to do everything manually, at least for once though, and then you can reuse them later. ASP.NET Forms generates most of the HTML, CSS and JavaScript codes for you, again thanks to the web controls. It's also event-driven. You have events that you can subscribe. In ASP.NET MVC there are no events. Everything is a request and you respond them in MVC actions. ASP.NET Forms is more rapid. You do the project and get done with it quickly. If you don't need advanced design considerations, ASP.NET Forms is a better choice for our client projects when there is a certain delivery measurement and development is not continuous. In MVC, you generally build an architecture according to the business logic, and in the long run this architecture is the development. But if you'll do the project, deliver and get your payment from the client, you're actually not developing this project continuously. So choose wisely. So then, when we should use MVC? It's a lower level framework than forms, and you tend to do more things manually. That gives you more power over HTML, CSS and JavaScript, but you do almost everything yourself. There is literally no limitation on how you will make the design of the page. You can even make a single page application, use Ajax easily, or use HTML5. In my opinion, what's more important is, you get to use design patterns more. Because MVC allows to build beautiful architecture. That means in the long run your application becomes much easier to develop, easier to reuse the old code, and also it sticks with the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. Also, MVC allows unit testing better than forms because you rely on C# classes more. It is also more flexible, not just in design point of view, but also in business logic and architecture point of view. Let's see the most important technical difference between ASP.NET Forms and MVC. For ASP.NET Forms, if a request comes to movie/list.aspx, if we don't have any special routing system installed. It goes to the list.aspx and that file gets executed. You can view, open and edit the file. But in ASP.NET MVC, when a request comes to movie slash list URL, it goes to a class instead of a file. It instantiates movies class and invokes its list method automatically. That's generally the first place you start creating your page in MVC. The class is named controller and the method is named action. Now let's look at a very simple controller. The name of the controller is movies and accordingly the class name is movies controller. It's a public class derived from controller base type and that's it. You can create a controller by right clicking in the solution explorer and choosing new class or you can choose new controller as well. The new controller option just derives from the class from the controller base type and adds the controller suffix to the name. Because that movies controller is a class, you actually don't need to put it into the controller folder because all the classes are compiled into the project assembly, in other words, into the project DLL file. By the default convention, and for making others easier to find our controllers, controller folder is a very good place to store them. Now let's see our action, list. It is a public method in the movies controller class. It returns a string and that string will be outputted into the screen. Returning null will result a blank screen. If you are wondering what if you want to return more complex results than string, like a view file or JSON, well, wait for it. Now what if you want to have just movies URL instead of movies slash list, then the special keyword for the action method is index. Just name it index and you can reach it by movies slash index or just movies in the URL. 
So how are we going to pass parameters? It is actually amazingly beautiful. Now to view a specific movie, let's implement view action. And in this method, define a parameter with int id, the id of the movie. We put the question mark after the action name, that is movie slash view question mark and parameters. Like this, movie slash view question mark id equals 3. By the way, there is a special case with the id parameter. If there is one parameter and that's name is id, you can do like this, movies slash list slash 3. But keep in mind that action methods parameter names are exactly matched with the query string parameter names. So what if we want a more complex example? Let's put search action. We want a query to search the string, minimum rating as double, and release year maybe. You can also make the release year parameter optional. It will work beautifully. So what will be the URL for this action? Let's look at another example. This is a search action, the same one. And here is my internet browser where I request that URL. And the result arrives. Whatever we return, it gets into the screen. And please pay attention to the URL. It is lowercase. ASP.NET MVC URLs are in case sensitive, but the URLs, not the parameters. I could have requested it with capital movies and capital search keywords. Now, what if we want to return HTML instead of just strings? We create view files with .cshtml extension. The views folder is located at the root of our MVC project and for each controller there is a folder with the controller's name, like movies. Choose Razor View Engine. Its syntax is beautiful. Also the default convention is besides creating a folder for each controller, creating a view file for each action with the action's name. But it's really a convention. You can create view files any way as you like. For example, look at this code. Return type for methods are action result, that's a special type of ASP.NET MVC for returning views and some more. That view method is coming from the controller base type and we call it to return a view. In the first example, we don't give any parameters to the view method and that means go to the view folder, then into the folder with the controller's name then return the view file matching with the current executing action. That is the list for the first one and list.cshtml will be returned. For the second one, the controller's name is still the same, but we override the action name. It will return view slash movies slash top movies.cshtml. If you want to completely overwrite both controller's name and action's name, we can give absolute URL starting with a tilde. Well, it is obvious what will return here, right? If you liked the video until here, please continue with the next video in this series. Also, please subscribe to our newsletter and don't miss any advanced software engineering videos. Your email address will be kept private 100%. Also, please share this video with two of your friends. We are giving these videos for free, but they actually have a huge cost to us. So do us a favor and share it. Let your friends learn it and show how much you keep learning new things. I am Atasasmas and you are on davis.com. Let's meet again on new videos.